Tampa Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, live in Las Vegas for EMC World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Uh, we're here live at EMC World with QLogic, Rob Davis, the CTO, CUBE alumni, I've been on many times. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, so talk about what's going on with you guys right now, obviously um, with the company, and then what's going on in EMC World. Well, all kinds of changes at QLogic. We have a new CEO. Uh, we've acquired uh, the assets of Broadcom's Ethernet business, or part of the assets, and we've acquired uh, Brocade's HBA business. So lots of things going on. Yeah, so, so Rob, you know, it, it, interesting times in the adapter business. I, I think when I joined uh, Wikibon four years ago, you, you kind of talked about the, the, the horses on the track. On the Ethernet side, you know, Intel and Broadcom, you know, really own that one gigabit uh, laying on motherboard business. And on the fiber channel side, you know, QLogic and Emulez had a, had a good duopoly going. Fast forward, you just talked, you know, QLogic just picked up some some, some really interesting assets. You know, what, what, what do you see as the landscape on the uh, kind of server adapter marketplace? Sure. So let's start with the fiber channel side. Yeah. Um, I think you were forgetting that LSI and PMC were still in the business along with Brocade. So there were really five players in the fiber channel Yeah, space well, the some of them, there's a difference between kind of the, the initiator and the target side, so. True, true. But, you know, LSI did have some business there, especially in the low end market. Yeah. So um, what you see on the fiber channel side on the server is it's down to a two horse race, which um, um, is, really good, we believe, for us because we've always had a lead over Emulex in the market share space and the technology side, so we feel pretty good about that. And then on the Ethernet side, um, there's even more players. You know, you have Chelsea, you have Intel, you have Brocade, I'm sorry, well, Brocade's Ethernet business that we took with their HBA business, and uh, ourselves and Emulex, lots of different players and some smaller guys like Solar Flare and Melanon. So again, that business is now starting to consolidate with our carve out of the of the Broadcom um, data, uh, technology. Yeah. So I mean, what what, what do you see as the uh, you know kind of architectural uh, discussion points that are having? You know, what 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 differentiates between them? It, it, things like you know really low latency networking. Uh, you know, on the Ethernet side, seems to be one of the hot topics. Um, you know, do, do, do we see emerging between the fiber channel and the Ethernet side, or you know, do, do you expect that those, those do, do you really from a chipset standpoint and an adapter set, um, or are they going to kind of live separately for a while? I, I think they're going to live separately for quite some time. Fiber channel is, a, you know, has a very established market. A, a very, all the uh, high-end um, enterprises have used it for years. They're comfortable with it. Ethernet has a very established market from a different perspective as the, um, you know, the basic connectivity. And so I think they're both going to live in their particular chat. areas for quite some time. All right, uh, so you know, Rob, the, the, the interesting kind of big announcement, one of the big announcements EMC made, they made an acquisition called DSSD. And while most people don't know too much about the architecture, they're talking about you know really low latency, I mean sub-microsecond uh, designs. Uh, I, I know this is an area you've looked at. You know, can, can you tell us you know, things like Rocky and uh, you know, RDMA over converged Ethernet and InfiniBand you know, is doing well. What, what, what are you seeing in the marketplace um, you know, th that, that's going to drive this discussion for the next couple of years? Well, I can tell you that uh, they are using, they have a fiber channel interface on whatever they're doing. Okay. So that tells you that fiber channel, especially at the 16 gig going to 32 gig um, performance level is important to the flash space. They're also doing 40 gig Ethernet. Um, so that uh, tells you that, you know, high performance is needed for flash, whether it's you know, whatever the network technology happens to be underlying it. Um, from a low latency perspective, um, Fiber Channel has always been a consistent latency store, you know, high performance storage interface, um, and Ethernet is getting there with the technologies like Rocky that you mentioned. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. Let's talk about Fiber Channel for, for, for a couple minutes then. You know, if I, if I look at the announcement EMC World, one that 
kind of struck me as kind of interesting is the VNXE now has a fiber channel port on it, and in talking to some of the Clarion and, and some of the converged solutions like VSpec, uh, they said that you know fiber channel is still really going strong, especially in Asia uh, and uh, in, in China uh, specifically. They they called out. I'm, I'm curious if you have any uh, input as to you know why it why it seems to be so strong there, especially at the lower end of the market. Oh uh, well, we see the same thing. Okay, I, I think. Um, one of the main reasons is that it's um, tried and true technology. You know, Ethernet is a great technology, really good for um, met, you know, server connectivity, general purpose server connectivity, but when you're doing high performance storage SANs, you, you definitely need a technology that you can count on that um, has a consistent latency and consistent high bandwidth. Um, Ethernet with iSCSI, with SCOE, is definitely moving in that direction. Lots of the low end in the US is iSCSI. Uh, in Asia, I think that it's it comes from the training that they get in our colleges, right? They come here, they learn about storage, SANS, fiber channel is what's taught, right? They look at what EMC is selling, they look at what NetApp is selling, and they, they're copiers, so they copy that fiber channel technology. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious to get your take. You look at what one of the big pushes EMC has is around uh, their Viper and their software-defined solution, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to be flexibility to go between some of the block architectures uh, and file and object. Um, you know, do, do you see a movement that way? Do you think we could finally, you know, get to the point where uh, we, we, we can embrace some of those solutions? Because when I talk to, you know, most technologists and you said, if I could choose what I want to do, you know, object gives me so much more um, and, and that would be great to if go that look, way, but. Yeah, if you look at the data sets today, yeah. I mean, object makes a, makes huge sense for a lot of the applications because it's write once, read many, right? That's what it's designed to do. And uh, block technology is designed to be in databases, right? And that's why block technology needs fiber channel performance. And that's why object technology is very well suited for Ethernet. And you know, we're excited about the growth in the that part of the storage business because it fits into our Ethernet um, push and our Ethernet, um, you know, our new Ethernet technology from, from Broadcom. Okay, uh, great. So you've you've pulled a bunch of different assets uh, for, through through the acquisitions, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. What does that mean to the portfolio of QLogic on, on the on the Ethernet side? Well, the first thing it does is it um, takes our 10 gigabit product line and it gives it the extension into the 40 gig and the 100 gig Ethernet space. Um, so we acquired um, technology for the existing server market in the quad port 10 gig area, and we acquired technology for next generation in the 40 and 100 gigabit area. Okay, and. What, what use cases, you know, where are we with the adoption of 40 and 100? Because, you know, price is always a challenge. Powers and cabling, you know, still can be concerns on, on some of these solutions. So, you know, where are we seeing uh, that, you know, that take off? Or do you expect it, you know, later this year for it to pick up? From the storage perspective, I think it, it really, it's really waiting for the server array vendors like EMC to add that port to their uh, arrays and their appliances and that technology. Um, we see on the fiber channel side that when there's a speed bump, you know, an 8 to 16 transition, for example, it isn't until the um, array vendors start providing the 16 gig ports that we see the new speeds take off. So I think that you'll see 40 gig with iSCSI and FCOE really take off as the array vendors start to provide it. All right, so uh, you're saying the storage array is the long pole in the tent and uh, getting things to take off? Well, I think on the storage side. On the, on the adapter side for regular servers, uh, it's really bandwidth requirement, right? So you see uh, most of the servers last year were still shipping with one gig, you know, a, a high percentage. Um, as the 10 gig becomes LOM, more LOM technology with this new Intel update, that'll probably start to become the norm is 10 gig over one gig, and then 40 gig will start to come into the high performance apps. Right now, I think 10 gig is is um, going to become the sort of the norm go going forward this year. All right, Rob, wh wh what can you, what can you update us on kind of the, the QLogic EMC relationship? You know, what, what do you what do you have going on this week? Uh, you know, where, where, where do you have interesting uh, partnership opportunities? Um, well, with EMC, we're doing uh, a lot of of work with their different um, product lines, their different array product lines with our 16 gig um, pro our, uh, target ASICs, and uh, also. We do work um, in some of their 
Ethernet appliance, you know, the appliance is doing Ethernet. So quite a quite a lot of connections between EMC and Keylogic on the vendor provider side. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to check out the show or you know what what you were interested to get out of this week. Well, I'm interested in in seeing um, what's going on in the flash. Um, space. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what's going on in the software-defined storage space. Um, there's always, you know, the new releases, the new press releases coming out of EMC gives you a, a glimpse into the future on the storage side. Rob, one of the things we've been talking about at our last couple of events is like how the world's changing software-defined enterprises. Joe Tucci says we're supposed to find data center. And Stu and I were just recently talking at the Red Hat Summit about the engines of innovation, and, and now everyone's building their own hot rods, using the car metaphor. So I want to ask you, what's your take as, you know, under the hood, the changes going on at the converged infrastructure, the, the key things that people might not be aware of, they're not in the trenches, the, the major trends that you see that are really instrumental in creating really these new power engines so that the souped up hot, hot rods of the enterprise in the data center, what are they going to look like? What are those key trends that you see that are the ones that are being worked on right now the most? So we're really excited about this area because our technology is very, um, especially on the Ethernet side, uh, is very um, modifiable to these hot rods so we can tune our engines, right? Typically in general purpose enterprise, your I.O., whether it's a fiber channel adapter or an Ethernet adapter, has all the knobs set to medium, right? So the bandwidth is set to medium bandwidth, the latency is set to medium. But if you know what the applications are, like in some of the hot rods you're describing, if you need low latency, you can turn the knobs to low latency. If you need high bandwidth, you can turn the tuning knobs to high bandwidth. So we're pretty excited so about that. So tuning is key, right? Um, well, also we, we think that there's areas for us to add value there. Um, one of the things Prasad is, is working on is a sort of a redefinition or a re-pumping um, new life into our product line through some of these um, uh, new initiatives that you're talking about. As the DevOps culture kind of gets into the data center, you know, guys who are kind of looking at that, they're like, oh, we don't, have, we don't really have room for failure. Manageability becomes a key part of it. What, how do you see the manageability piece coming into all this? Um, we see the, the vendors asking us to add more visibility into the data flows um, going through our parts and, um, the, you know, categorizing them more. So we think that, uh, that we're well positioned to, to provide that. What's the biggest thing that surprised you guys at QLogic in the past two years in terms of the, the mega trends? Was, are, were there things that uh, you, you see or saw that you acted on or things that you looked at and said, hey, we could have rode that wave a little better? What was some of the, some of the highlights in the past two years? I think um, how quickly Flash um, took off was, was something that surprised us in many different ways. Um, for one thing, it, it seemed to have rejuvenated uh, Fiber Channel um, the startups that were doing Flash, initially we were working with them and they all wanted 10 and 40 gig Ethernet. And then it seemed like they went out and talked to customers and they came back and they all needed 16 gig fiber channel and when were we going to have 32 ready? <laughs> so <laughs> Put pressure on you guys. It did, and, but in a good way. So yeah, I yeah. think that surprised us. I think we thought that was going to be more of an Ethernet space um, yeah. just because it was new and green field. How did all that stuff go down with Brocade and stuff and, and Broadcom? Take us through some of the play by play and, and why. Um, well, so I think that uh, we had a switch business for many years, a uh, fiber channel switch business, and when we decided to back out of that space, uh, it made working with Brocade much easier, and since we were the number one supplier of adapter, fiber channel adapters, and they were the number one supplier of fiber channel switches, it just made sense for us to, to figure out how to partnership. And it's exciting because not only have we taken their um, you know, their technology on the adapter side into our product line, but they had some really neat um, features that they weren't able to market very well because of the size of their, of their market share. And now that we have that technology on our side, we're able to um, really do some neat things in the QoS and in the, um, um, you know, the management of the data flows areas that um, you'll see in some future products. Yeah, so Rob, it's been interesting. After the you know the, the move, QLogic getting out of the switches, Brocade getting out of the adapter side, uh, we've actually seen a little bit of a rallying around uh, you know all the players that are involved in fiber channels to help with uh, the messaging and things like Gen Six, um, and just for the inside baseball, we, we we've seen that so companies that I remember. 
10 years ago, we're working to get, you know, 10, 15 years ago, working to get fiber channel off uh, and, and into the environment. We're now working closer together. So, um, you know, you're mentioning some of the features, you know, do you think there's still innovation left in fiber channel? Uh, definitely, I mean, you see the 32 gig and the 120 gig, 28 gig speeds coming through the standards uh, very quickly. Uh, I think the partnership with Brocade that we now have um, will help accelerate that because we can be more lockstep on our roadmaps instead of very secretive about them pre-announcements. Right. Um, I think uh, that you see Amulex also, you know, joining us, and you see play big players like EMC, um, you know, HP, some of the other big storage players on the fiber channel side also very okay. involved. So, last question I have for you is, uh, you, you know, look at the really big players, you know, the, the Googles, Facebooks, and Amazons, you know, what impact are they having on your business? Um, well, they aren't having an impact on our business directly, but they're having an impact on our customers' business, and that uh, is um, definitely noticed, but on the other hand, they are new opportunities for us, too. We see them as OEMs, right? They're just as big and buy just as many build just as many servers now as an HP or a, or a Dell, right? So we see them as um, customers to innovate with and provide, um, you know, the interconnects that they need for their systems. And what's really interesting about those companies is, take Facebook, for example, they only run five apps, I think, in all their data centers. And so if we go back to the tuning discussion we had earlier, you can now tune an entire data center to those five apps. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's different. You on know, the iOS right, side. Facebook has five different configurations they do. Amazon, on the other hand, has dozens of configurations and expects to have more. So different philosophies uh, as you, you, you but, can, but can that's, look out there. But if you look at HP, they have you know thousands of different right. configurations, right? Because their customers can configure it any way they want. And so you have to design your I.O. to be ready for whatever's thrown in, at you. In the old days, I say old days, <laughs> A couple of years ago, your OEM business was groove swing. Now you got Open Compute, you got Amazon, these guys purpose building their own stuff. You guys have been working with them as well. How much has the cycle of innovation accelerated things like Open Compute, where there's now a tinkering maker culture out there? Does that change how you guys look at the market, or have that, has that impacted you yet? We're seeing some early signs of the tinkering around developers, not just being the classic hardware geeks, but now software. Has that hit you guys yet? Um, definitely, we're. You know, in OCP, for example, we built an OCP adapter for that platform. Um, so we're involved with that quite a bit. We're looking at ways to um, accelerate the protocols on uh, the OCP side and the OpenStack side, similar to the way we accelerate the protocols of iSCSI and FCOE and Fiber Channel on the Ethernet side. So we see that as a definite engine of innovation, and it's also driving innovation back on the Fiber Channel side because it's creating competition of a different <laughs> architecture. You know, speeds and feeds are back, but also it's got to be encapsulated away from the developers. You're seeing the software models hit. So it's also impacted the cloud. You're seeing huge expansion on data centers in Iowa for, for the big guys. The big players are massively scaling up, and the enterprise want hyperscale. You're seeing a lot of that going on. Absolutely. You, I think that the architecture of hyperscale is migrating to the enterprise. You guys are going to be in the consumer business, I guess, soon, right? Yeah? <laughs> Fiber channel on my iPhone? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I think we'll, we'll oh, keep. Obviously, it's funny, but. but I it, think it, the hyperscale is definitely an Ethernet business, and that's why we, yes. you know, hyped up, or I mean, in incorporated the Broadcom technology to really get yeah. our Ethernet that could going. That shoe could drop any minute now. Did you worry about that at all? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Volumes, <laughs> volume increases, I need a zillion oh, adapters. Oh, oh. Well, uh, we've, um, I don't know if you've been following, but we've been um, adding to uh, our, our executive staff a lot of expertise uh, on the Ethernet side, yeah. on the, on the uh, op hyperscale side, and on the operations side to get ready for those. That gets Stu all happy because he's been writing about this for a while, still he's smiling over there. Yeah, see, it's coming back. <laughs> Stu was right. Rob, really appreciate you coming to theCUBE. Uh, fantastic conversation, and uh, it's been great to chat with you here inside theCUBE at EMC World. I'll give you the final word. Uh, tell the folks out there in your own words, why is this point in time so different in the computer industry, the technology industry, than any other time in terms of the, the confluences of the megatrends? What, what's unique about this moment in time? Well, I think you have two megatrends coming together at the same time. That's the cloud 
and flash flash has is totally changing the way that storage is being done because you no longer have to design your systems around the limitations of the moving parts of a disk drive and cloud you know cloud is really allowing a, a new revolution a revolution in the architecture not so much i mean it's really a pendulum swing because back in the early days of timeshare everybody called up a, com a mainframe computer and used a terminal to talk to it. Now our terminals have just turned into our, our phones and our, our tablets, um, but that architecture kind of went away for quite a few years and, and is back now, and that's, that's really exciting too. Great to have you on, QLogic, powering the engine of innovation, big component, big part of the, big part of the engine. Really appreciate your time, Rob Davis, CTO of QLogic. We'll be right back here in theCUBE after this short break.